Hi guys, welcome to this session in Microsoft Excel. In this module, I want to show you how you can customize and create your own slicer style and how you can group that slicer to a pivot chart to get you a more enhanced filtration system. So first of all, let me create a simple pivot table based on this little set of data. I'm going to go insert pivot table, let it pick up the list existing worksheet and put it into cell G1, click OK to that, drops it in, build up my pivot table, so I want a list of courses, I want a count of courses, I want a sum of cost, and I need to format that, so I'll click on sum of cost, go into value field settings, number format, select accounting so that doesn't lose its format, OK to that, OK to that, and location I'll put into filters, so that's just a basic pivot table very simple on the pivot table analyze tab you've got insert slicer so insert slicer I've got course cost location so any of these I can pick as a slicer for this example I'm going to select course and then click OK and I get the default slicer which is no longer one of these preloaded ones because I've created my own custom slicer so that's what this is. So what I want to do first off is show you how I've done that. So you can create a new slicer style, which allows you, for example, to change the font style. If I go back to one of these default ones, you can see the font styles are set and there's no way of changing the font style. However, if you go through the slicer options, new slicer style in there, I'll call this one sax. And then you've got different sections. So the first section there says the whole slicer. So you're formatting the whole slicer or just the header or whatever you want to select in these. So I'm going for the whole slicer. Then I'm going format. And then I'm picking the font style. So I want to reduce the font a little bit. Or you could make it bigger. It's up to you. I'm going down to 8, which is quite small. You can change the... Um, font if you want the style of the font you can change the color i'll leave it as that border i don't want any border because i'm going to merge this with the chart later on fill it's up to you what you do with the colors um i'm going to go for a little pinky color whatever color that is uh, i don't want to pattern anything like that now if i come back to this first tab you've got um i click ok you've got the options of formatting there i've just shown you that one if i click ok come back to this box that's what I want to do. Tick this. So this new one I've just created is going to be the default slicer. If I click OK to that. I've already got one called that, so I'll have to put a one on it. OK to that. So now if I delete this slicer and get myself another one. Insert slicer. Um, do it for course. Tick. OK comes in as a pink slicer like so and then you can with normal slicer settings just make this a bit thinner and wider like so so they all fit on there so i've got it's on one column at the minute if i change that to i think it's six seven columns six columns gets me every course that's in my list i'm just going to sit it at the bottom there that's as big as that table is ever going to get because that's the only courses that there are you can, when you format the slicer, get rid of the top area as well, but then you don't get the option to bring the filter back by taking that little red cross off there when it's filtered. But at the moment, if I just click on that, it just filters. That's what you would lose if you didn't have a header there, but I'm leaving that as it is. So now what I want to do is get myself a little pivot chart, which, um, just double click on that, does not have its own little filter on. Now, a normal chart would have a filter symbol there, but on a pivot chart, unless you've got something sitting in there, which I do, so that's where the filter is on a pivot chart. I'll just grab some data and just show you what a normal chart would look like. If I just go insert column chart, like so, you do get the filter there on that chart. So this is just a bit of a weird thing now. Get rid of that. So what I want to do is I want to position this slicer on top of this chart like so 
and then I want to group it with this chart so I'm holding my shift key down and I'm clicking on the pivot chart I've got them both selected I'm right clicking I'm selecting group group so I get this now all becomes one thing which I can move around like so I can move it all around but I get the benefit now of doing a little filter from within here using the slicer still it's now attached to this um, chart and I can hold my control key down in the same way and select multiple things so I've selected three things there so the three things are there I can clear the filter off as I would expect to so I've basically created myself a filter on this chart where I didn't have it before so if I go back into the pivot table I now don't really need that filter in there it's totally up to you if you want it on or not but I quite like the way that you can do that you can group your slicer and attach it to a pivot chart to get the best of both worlds so that's just a little video on how you can create your own little slicer you don't have to set it as default if you don't want you can still just have it in custom so if I go back up there and um, in, when I go insert slicer I just click on, click on course or not course I'll click on something else location get my little slicer coming up that's the default that I've told it to be that's the other one that I did previously and then these are the standard ones that you normally would get so it's totally up to you how you want to do this you're not stuck with what you create just get rid of that so hopefully that little video is of use thank you for your time and I'll catch you in the next one